Don't I'm New York, land of trout streams and apple orchards. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, world-famous cooking instructor, Julia Child. Musicians, R.E.M. Another installment of Limited Perspective with former welder, movie critic, John David George to review Flashdance and Viewer Mail. And now, a man who just sucker punched Tom Brokaw, David Letterman! Welcome uh, to the program, folks. My name is David Letterman, and uh, nice to have you here. You got, got a good crowd. We, we got a great show for you. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was just leafing through the brand new edition of uh, TV Guide. There's an interesting article in there. You might want to pick it up after the show. How to tell the sex of a Smurf. Look at it. Study it. <laughs> Last night, uh, I mentioned to the studio audience, uh, we had kind of a peculiar uh, show here last night. Oh, no, nobody was arrested, nobody was beaten up or anything. But afterwards, I uh, felt kind of restless, so I was out. Geez, I don't know what I was looking for. I, well, I'll tell you what I was looking for. I was looking for a light beer that wouldn't let me down. And, um, <laughs> but uh, I went to this bar downtown, supposedly a very hip uh, unbelievable place, but I don't know, the entertainment was sort of lame. They had a Priscilla Presley impersonator. <laughs> uh, we, you know who's, Paul, do you know who's across the hall? Do you have any idea who's over there? Doing live at five? That's right. No, I don't. Who's over there? One of the most uh, beautiful women in the world, Sophia Loren is over there. You're kidding. Have you ever met Sophia Loren? I've never had the pleasure. Should we go over there or not? Yeah. Uh, hold on, hold on. See, this is the kind of thing that could turn ugly like that. Uh, and I'll have to be honest with you. Everybody on this staff, on the staff of this program, thinks this is a keen idea. Sophia knows nothing about it, so, it, you know, it could be, you know, kind of ugly, but... Um, I, th I can do this without being nasty about it, right? Yeah. I just, we just want to go over, introduce ourselves, get a look at her. And, oh, no, it was a coarse, a coarse, terrible thing to do. All right, now, but if it, if, it gets, if it gets screwed up and ugly and embarrassing, it'll still be all right, okay? Yeah. All, all, right. all right. I'll go over there. What, uh, no, you can cover me. Right. This is, of course, the uh, legendary hallway. How do you do? Nice to see you. And he'll get that press, will you? All right, Carl, you all set? Oh, oh, oh. How do you do? Are you friends of the groom? <laughs> Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you remember Bob Rooney. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. That's all right. That's all right. Just uh, Sophia dropped the set out of her ring. How do you do? Hi, Liz, how are you? This is legendary columnist Liz Smith, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rita Stippo. Rita, hi, nice to see you. Hi, Rita was, was on our show years and years ago with the home movies, weren't you? That's right. Nice to see you. We're nice to see gonna you. see if we can, yes, we're gonna get thrown out on her ears, but we're gonna do, how do you do? Nice to see you. Nice Thank you. Oh, nothing, nothing. We're testing some equipment. Well. Okay, let's just, uh, who was I kidding? I am scared silly. How do you do? Hi. Excuse me, come right up. Watch your step, will you? How do you do? Is it Miss Loren? Hi. Uh, my name's David Letterman. It's certainly a pleasure to meet you. Uh, we, we, uh, we are doing a show across the, uh, across the hall. Oh, I know. We, oh, we want to do, could you just say hello to the folks in our studio audience? Hi. Oh, that's very nice of you. Boy, you're, you're lovely. You're just, you're just beautiful. You really shouldn't be smoking, though. 
because I knew you were going to fall in oh, love you, with me. No, you didn't know that, did you? Yes, I did. Did okay. somebody tell you that? Yes, I can foretell things. <laughs> oh, so you have mystical powers? Nice meeting you. <laughs> Good luck to you. you. It really was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much. Take care. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Excuse the intrusion. Goodbye. Oh, no, it's fine. All we want to do... Oh, no, it's perfect. Be in touch with us about what? About Sophia Loren. Oh, okay, fine. All right, well, that was Sophia Loren. Something about flu shots. Hi, how are you? you give this back to Bob? All right, we'll go back inside now. Hi, Frank, how are you? Good, nice to see you. She didn't know. She didn't know we were coming over there, did she? No. All right. Handsome looking, though, isn't she? But she she had like an unfiltered uh, look, like a lucky. I'm serious. Smoking a lucky. But I mean, that's not the kind of thing Sophia Loren ought to be doing. Is puffing on a lucky, should it? It's like a Teamsters meeting in there. Well. Uh, this is uh, this is viewer mail night, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is a uh, tradition for us. Ever since the late '50s, we've been answering our viewer mail, and uh, tonight is certainly no exception. I'm still a little nervous about that. Let's go on to letter number one. Uh, this comes to us from a gentleman named Bill Frost, Santa Clara, Utah. Dear Dave, Bill says, can you believe it? A whopping five pounds well bill uh i have to agree with you that five pounds is pretty impressive but take a look at this bill this is eight pounds steve Tommy, Bob, Tommy, Bob. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we like to start out with the sophisticated stuff. All right, that was letter number one. Letter number two, Dear Dave, I watch your show every other night, parentheses. I can't watch it every night because of stupid school, and I really like it. I always watch it Thursday because of viewer mail. Maureen Jackson, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Thank you very much, Maureen. You know, we were so intrigued to learn from your letter about the Philadelphia stupid school <laughs> that we sent our late-night camera crew to tape some classes, so please, folks, if you'll watch the monitors and at home, use your TVs. Can anybody tell me who is the second president of the United States? Delaware? Thank you, Roger. That was a very stupid answer. Does anybody know an even stupider answer? Going to the zoo? Very good, Maureen. Certainly a very nice, a, a credit to our fine public educational system. And, and, of course, good luck to the Phillies. Now, letter number three. Dear Dave, I am writing this for the millions of Americans who have become smash maniacs. Yes, thanks to you, we can't go a week without seeing objects being smashed, shattered, and pulverated. So, Dave, let's get out there and make all of us sleep easier at night. Uh, I'll even go as far as to say smashing this... I'll even go as far as to... Smashing this live moth to get things going. Yours truly, Tim Devantier, Fullerton, California. Timothy, you didn't really have to kill a moth just to make your point. The steamroller segments on the show are very popular. We know that. The problem is that they're very expensive to produce, so we can't really be expected Excuse to, me. to turn them out. Uh, Excuse me, Mr. Letterman. What? Hey, that, uh, that guy that killed that moth, uh, I wonder if you have his address. His address, yes. He lives at... Uh, 2312 Macon Avenue, Fullerton, California. Uh, 2312. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Take care. 
Uh, so anyway, Tim, we'll, we'll try to get more of those segments on for you as, as soon as possible. Okay. Let's see, letter number four. Uh, David, you are my favorite TV friend. Well, that's very nice. Uh, that is why I'm coming to you with this complex problem. Please help. Why are there parts missing from frozen Cornish game hens? The missing parts are either a leg or wing. Only you can give this issue proper attention, Marla. Marla. Uh, well, Marla, for the answer to your question, we contacted the Chamber of Commerce in Cornwall, England, home of the Cornish game hen. Uh, it turns out that that's what the Cornish game is. You see, two teams of 12 men trying to pull legs and wings off as many hands as possible in two 45-minute halves. I, I hope that answers your question. Finally, letter number five, uh, Marilee Lipton. Oh, that's a pleasant name. Isn't that a nice name, Paul? Marilee Lipton? Porchester, New York. Da Dear Dave, 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 what should I do? Every night at 1230, my television picture gets really fuzzy, and I miss your show. I haven't seen Late Night since, well, since way back in the late 50s. It's very frustrating. I say it's a conspiracy against me, Dave. What do you think? You've got to help me, Dave. You're, you've just got to. Thanks again, Marilee Lipton. <laughs> well, Marilee, you know... I'd be glad to help you, but before I can, you're going to have to abandon this ridiculous notion of yours that there's some sort of sinister conspiracy out to get you. <laughs> this is a very absurd idea. Wait a second. Listen to me. There is a conspiracy. He's a liar. He's lying to you. I have names. I have dates. It goes higher than you can possibly imagine. They're going to try to kill him. Well, I, I certainly hope you've all enjoyed viewer mail this week. I know I have, and just remember this, Sophia Loren smokes luckies. Now, uh, we got a fine show for you tonight. Julia Child will be here, uh, an excellent band, uh, uh, R.E.M., Los Angeles Times Magazine, in a recent write-up uh, indicated that uh, their new album was among the best of 1983, so we're excited about having them here. Also, another installment of Limited Perspective tonight, a welder, John David George, will be here to review the movie Flashdance. Come on back when you're done looking at the commercial. <laughs> mentioned before, we have a uh, just a, a knockout show tonight. Julia Child will be out here in a minute. See, this is what I was supposed to do. I got so nervous. I was supposed to... This was my lame excuse for going over there to give uh, Sophia a sponge. So we'll uh, messenger that over there to her. Uh, Julia Child, uh, of course, she is the, uh, this country's favorite chef. Uh, she is a charming woman. She has a brand new television series coming up on PBS entitled Dinner at Julia's House, which premieres October 14th. Uh, it's a pleasure now to welcome Julia Child. <laughs> Show. On Monday, legendary advertising man David Ogilvy will be here. Also from the New York Yankees, David Winfield will be here. And uh, Carol Kane, who recently won an Emmy Award. Did she not win an Emmy Award? She will be here on uh, Monday. Uh, my next guest, uh, from time to time on this program, folks, you may realize that we have a segment called Limited Perspective. Now, in this, people from different walks of life review films for us from their own special points of view. And tonight, with a review of the hit film Flashdance. Welcome, please, uh, former uh, City College New York welding instructor. Did I get that right, Kevin? City College of New York, thank you. City College of New York welding instructor, John David George. John. Nice to see you, John. How you doing? So you went to see uh, Flashdance? Yes. And you prepared a review of the film for us from, from your point of view as a welder? Yes. Is there anything else we ought to need? You just want to go ahead and give us the review now? Whatever you'd like. Okay, go right ahead, uh, okay. John, and tell us uh, all about Flashdance. Well, I went and saw this movie, Flashdance, and uh, it's about a welder who dances at night. And uh, the thing that bothered me about it, she's, she's 18 years old, and yet she's got a uh, round four loft, and she's got enough money to put herself through four years of dance school. Right. Which, uh, now I'm 30 years old, and I got 
10 years of walling behind me, and I live in three rooms. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, it's not, not uh, correct that way. You don't make that kind of money. And especially when you see her actually weld, you can tell that she's not a welder, all right? <laughs> when she's welding, she's just tapping and making sparks, which uh, one of my foremen would have seen it, they would have made a face like uh, rotten fruit. <laughs> but, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> all right? Yeah. She wouldn't, she wouldn't hold a job. To do, to do welding, you have to have a lot of training, background, you gotta love it, and uh, you gotta maintain a constant arc, okay? You can't just tap. Uh, <laughs> the, other thing, the other thing is the safety violations, which is actually serious, because you, you don't wanna show people uh, that welders you know, behave this way. Sure. In other words, uh, we see her, welding and then she takes off her helmet and she's got all this curly hair comes down and big brown eyes and she's like oh that looks great right but a welder he's not worried about curly hair and big brown eyes he's worried he's worried about what his hair is going to catch fire <laughs> And he's worried, he's worried maybe something hot's gonna jump on his eye, right? And he's a one-eyed welder. Mm. So, <laughs> so what, you have to wear a, a wool cap or a cotton cap mm -hmm. to protect your hair. If you got long hair, you push it up under the cap and you gotta wear safety goggles, yeah. all right? The protective goggles that don't shatter. Uh, other than that, the safety goggles and the, uh, and the uh, cap She's also wearing these buttons, all right, on her jacket while she's welding. Okay, let's go for a party. You go to a party, <laughs> <laughs> you wear the buttons, you look nice okay, sure. after work. But during work, what happens is these buttons are reflecting the arc, which is 10,000 degrees, okay? It's like the sun. And what it does, it reflects on the buttons, the buttons reflect up into your eyes, and you get a condition on your eyes known to all welders. It's called flesh. Flesh. Right? A welder, so you see a welder going like this. He's got flesh, which is a sunburn, sunburn on the eyes. Yeah. Okay? Sun, actual sun burning of the eye surface, okay? So you can't have that. Right. Not if you're going to make a career of welding. Okay. Is that it? You have any uh, any other points? Well, uh, okay, well, all right. Other than that, I thought she did a good job. But <laughs> the good things, if you want to, if you want to, a couple of the good things, she did do a good job of burning with the oxyacetylene mm -hmm. torch. And somebody actually showed her how to do that. Okay, John, let's uh, quickly go through these uh, photos and just briefly comment. I guess you mentioned about she, her hair really was too long to be a, a safe welder. Not not to be worn like that. Okay. No. Now, what about this uh, safety outfit? Uh, for, could she dance in those boots? <laughs> Yeah, I think she could dance in them both. <laughs> All right, do you see the buttons on there you were talking about, John? No, not right now. Okay, what else do we have here? Oh, now, is this, is, do you see any safety violations there? These are all stills from the film. Well, I don't know. It looks looks like it's kind of kind of smoky. You know, I don't know if they did that on purpose. Okay, now here, kind of uh, goofing around on the job site. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, don't you do wouldn't be doing that. All right, no. and, well, now here. How about, about those goggles? Are those all right? Those goggles are all right. I wouldn't wear a pair like that myself. But, uh, but again, the hair? The hair would be tough. a problem. Up. Yeah. And the helmet. Right. Yeah. Well, the helmet's okay. But helmet's the, okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, summing up then, John, was it a good movie for welders or not a good movie for welders? Well, the welders who are actually welders that you see just sort of going about their business, you could see they were professional. Yeah. Uh, just, just her when she was welding. All right. So with the exception of the star, it was a good movie for welders. <laughs> with the exception of the star. John, thank you very much. Nice thank you. Show. We're finished uh, for another week. I want to thank, of course, REM, uh, Julia Child, uh, John David George, our uh, a welder who reviewed Flashdance. Bill Wendell, thanks, Bill, for your help. And, of course, the studio audience, you folks are terrific, as always. I'd also like to thank Paul Schaefer and America's premier rock and roll band. They'll be, they'll be at the Meadowlands.